you speak to a lot of CISOs, as do I, what's the advice you give them mm -hmm. if, if they are not as fortunate to have mm -hmm. that set up already and maybe they're coming in new and they realize yeah. we, we need to do something. How, how do you even yeah. pitch that internally? Well, or how would yeah, you pitch yeah. that internally? So, I mean, there's different ways to pitch it. Um, what I've found in the, the CISO space is a lot of times uh, your, your average tenure for a CISO um, these days is 18 months. So it seems to be a rotating door. Um, if you have a, 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 a CISO that is really, uh, really strong and gets hired into uh, into a business uh, because they, they know they need change, sure. they've had issues, um, the last CISO got fired because of them, whatever it may be, um, that's your opportunity. Negotiate up front. Don't negotiate as much for pay and comp and all that kind of fun stuff. You can do that. But the real focus should be, you should be interviewing the company. If, if you're going into a role, you know, there's a lot of CISOs out there that go into roles, know it's going to be 18 months, negotiate for a really good contract or whatever it is for 18 right. months worth of work and 18 months worth of stuff before they end up, there's a major issue because the resourcing isn't there and the culture isn't there and all these things aren't there. And then they get booted. And essentially, you know, from a board perspective, the risk went away because the, the CISO that wasn't doing the job is, is moved on. Right. Security theater. Again, we know I don't like security theater. So when, when advising CISOs that are sitting in a role um, is to A, make sure they're not in a role like that. And if they are, to quickly find themselves, not necessarily out, but to advise and work their way up uh, with leadership to explain the situation, that's the risk that the company has. Um, but also, if they, uh, if they you know, are newly coming into a company, to make that part of the discussion. Right. Um, anyone that's interviewing a, a CISO that's willing to just take blindly what's going on and say, oh, I can fix it all, probably is on the latter plan where they're going to be there for a little while and gone and you know, absolve the, uh, the risk with it. Um, rather than, in our case, um, we want to build that, you know, that, that culture. And how do you build a culture? Get executive sponsorship. If you don't have executive sponsorship above yourself, make yourself that executive. Invite invite the yeah. business leaders on board. Uh, explain that you're trying to enable them rather than putting blockers in their way of doing things and without their participation. Start to build uh, that that group, if you will, of leaders that uh, strongly believe that they need to be secure in order to do their business. It, it's, it's a long road in some businesses. And we're still on that journey today. As you get large and, and scale and complexities increase, you need to continue to make security the simplest way of doing things. Um, and by making them simple, people will naturally go towards them. If you make things hard, people will go away from them because yep. especially in our case, innovation is key. Innovation and the speed of you know, the internet, if you will, to be able to get things done. Um, so from a security perspective, that's one of the things that we focused on early uh, and we're still focused on today is continuing to drive down the cost of security to the builders uh, that are building and running services. Yep. That model helped us to um, you know, not only helped us, it, it was very well in line with our ownership model, and it made made sure that the single-threaded leader owned security. So if there's a security issue, they were the ones responsible. In saying that, doesn't mean that that lets Steve or I or others off the hook. Sure. It's our job to establish the bar, to monitor and, and audit the bar, if you will, to report on it, to make sure that our executive team is understanding of the risk that we're taking and where where we need to drive that down. Um, as well as to create tooling, services, capabilities to make it easier because yeah, security to needs to be the path of least resistance for those teams. Yep. And we continue down that journey, but I think that uh, you know we've we've seen over the years that strong owners want to own anyway. Yep. So the model really aligns with our builder mentality because you don't want to, as a service team owner, when we were running VPC, I didn't want to have anyone else be responsible for it. When I built uh, AWS GovCloud or subsequent other government entity stuff, um, I wanted to be the last. I wanted to be the the one that was responsible for it because it also meant that I kept eye on the ball. I had metrics that I was trying to hit, um, risk reduction or otherwise, and those are the types of things that if you're paying attention to things, you'll be able to you know to drive down in this case for security drive down the risk. And going back to security theater. Um, I want to do absolutely nothing. I'm not an actor. Right. I, I, I want to, you know, a security professional or engineer, right. and I want to engineer. And my team wants to do the same. They don't want to do things that uh, appear to be meaningless. Yep. Um, you know, blocking things that creates frictions for our builders and users just 
to say to someone that we blocked access to stuff when we all know as engineers, you can engineer your way around a lot of blocks. So you need to engineer in smart ways of, of getting things done. And there's a lot of technologies out there. And just as we found coming from the FBI to Amazon, we had, we had the challenges. We understood working backwards from the customer. In that case, we were the customer. So, uh, you know, when we, when we look at our uh, sort of larger security culture, um, when we, we speak about it uh, to customers that, that mm -hmm. you know, reinforce and reinvent and, and, our, and other third party summits, we often talk about having mechanisms to help support it. Mm -hmm. And one of the key mechanisms that you often refer to is I believe it's your weekly meeting yeah. with the CEO and that you get approximately an hour with him yeah. to discuss security topics. Mm -hmm. So when I speak with customers, I get questions like, well, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. What do they talk about? Oh, yeah. And then how do I learn from that relationship that the AWS CISO has with the AWS CEO yeah. and perhaps you know, try to get that in my own org? Right. Because as we see, uh, building a strong security culture is much easier when you have that executive top-down yeah. support. So we'd love for you to talk a little bit about and what, yeah. you, what you can about mm -hmm. what that weekly meeting looks like, what kind of prep goes into oh, it absolutely. from your side, et cetera. We'll be very transparent with, sure. with how we do there. So going back to how AWS security was established with Andy, you know, kind of uh, fostering, not kind of actually fostering the creation of it, um, and the single-threaded leader model, he, personally wanted to be involved in what was going on and be witting of the security challenges that we were having. So after we were stood up and had, had you know, a few security engineers that were actually being able to re respond to things from an AWS perspective, um, we started to realize there were things that we would want Andy to be witting of, not only Andy, but the executive staff as a whole uh, to be witting of, but it wasn't something that we needed to, you know, 2 a.m. call them and say, hey, we're, we need a meeting to, to explain this stuff. Um, and uh, that along with the idea that we wanted to make sure that the culture that we were building um, was coming from the top down mm -hmm. on a regular basis in those places where we're likely the weakest from the culture perspective. The idea then spawned that we would go ahead and have our security operations team, which was very small then, is much larger these days, right. um, have call outs every week. So during the week, if there was something that raised the raised to you know a bar of of attention, if you will, we would go ahead and review them, mm -hmm. and say, okay, these two, three, whatever it may be, um, are going to be the Friday meeting, uh, you know, content, and still to this day, a little bit more structured format, but in the end, um, what we actually have is. We do the reviews on a Monday of the preceding week. Okay. Um, normally during the week, if if I or others actually identify something that we think should be a call out, we'll, we'll mention, it, mention it during some of the meetings and stuff that we have that ends up on the call out list. Okay. And on Monday we'll review that list and pick the top two or three, depending on you know t time available. And uh, from Monday, there's actually kind of a reasonably formal process that kicks off with notification to the team leader. When I say the team leader, the VP or the service team owner, okay. uh, along with uh, the people that we know that work on their behalf. A that lot would of be related to this call out. And it's okay. it's a direct tasking okay. saying, you know, you're witting of what's been going on. You're now coming to the Friday meeting. We need you to, uh, to organize together. Here's the format, this is how we do it. It's basically a two page doc mm -hmm. um, that can be reviewed in 10 minutes or so red and fiber a little bit more um, that um, is put together to be a concise statement of, it's almost akin to a COE or a correction of error. Okay. So or five whys, um, what your action items are, how you're gonna fix it. You know, from a security perspective, we wanna know is the issue or the risk mitigated or unmitigated? A lot of the details that you'd wanna know about a security related thing are right up front. So the team uh, creates that along with assistance from my team in order to create a concise write up. And that goes through a lot of reviews during the week. Starts off Monday with the tasking. Tuesday, there's an initial review. Wednesday, there's a literal, like, we get together in a room and review. Um, then it goes to legal and others to make sure that what we have in there is concise and, and clear. Um, and then, uh, in, you know, depending on the write-ups, myself or others will actually review it ahead of time. Then we go into Friday, and it's a one-hour standing meeting every Friday um, where, you know, Adam, and Peter DeSantis and normally Matt Garman or Bob Kimball depends on who's available, but the, the core um, meeting is at a minimum 
Adam or Peter. Okay. Um, normally both. And in most cases it is both because they prioritize the meeting, understanding how important it is. And we um, then start the meeting off and it's first doc read. At that time, that team that's responsible for that gets pulled into the virtual meeting or the <clears throat> real meeting, depending on, it's been virtual for a while now, given the pandemic. So they can answer questions. So they can answer questions because it's their doc, it's their issue. They're the owners of it. We're there. We actually normally have a paragraph about our perspective or what we need to do, improvements that we need to make because we learn things as well. We, we put that into the doc as well. The discussion then, you know, normally they read the doc and normally I'll kick it off and say questions, comments. That's right. like a quote pretty much every time. <laughs> questions, <laughs> comments. There is no presentation right. or this is what, you know, it's straight up, you write it into the doc if you want them to know it. And uh, we've, you know, and normally, you know, kick off and some of the different team members will ask questions, uh, service team owners or otherwise. Some of the questions normally are very obvious. You know, what went wrong? I see right. you said this, but why? You know, right. keep digging on the whys, even you know, even though it may be in the dock a bit. Um, any clarifications is part of that. That discussion invariably moves towards: Is the team thinking right? Um, how are they? You know, uh, set up for dealing with security? Are they keeping security as the number one priority? That's where that culture can can be reinvigorated if it's not already there, or in this case, created. So I find the Friday security, you know, weekly uh, security review meeting that we have to be the number one mechanism that you can have to reinforce or build a security culture within within a business. Well, that's it why you know, it, it almost sounds like that's a, a business operations meeting. Yeah. Oh, with yeah. with a security bent, much more than a security meeting, because yeah, no, uh, absolutely. The, the the CEO is looking: Are you functioning as a business? And here here are some issues. Yeah. It could have been an accounting problem, but it happens to be the focus is 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 security, which is fantastic. Yeah, very much so. And if you think about it, it from a business perspective, um, we say and we actually have prioritization of those things that we have. Number one is security priority. We, we like to say priority zero, but it's the top priority. Right. We're computer nerds, so zeros come before ones. Uh, but being the top, um, top priority um, from a business perspective, that same process is continued. Every week, that's what happens. That one hour meeting has become two hour meetings when we have things that we need to talk about. Um, so it is a, you know, it is a mechanism uh, to reinforce, but it's also you know, that's one of the things talking to other CISOs, I kind of beat the drum on if you don't have something akin to this, even if you can't get the CEO, if you can get the COO, sure. um, or depending on the org structures and things like the businesses are run differently, get the most senior person you can. And what you'll find is sometimes that will become viral to where the, uh, the CEO or the leadership of the company further on realizes, well, this is something that we really should double down on. I've seen that in a lot of cases. In the tech industry, um, probably the biggest way, if you don't have, you're not coming on new or you're not in a position where some of these other things have worked, um, the next big security issue that pops up, uh, use that as your opportunity sure. as a, uh, you know, never let uh, an emergency go to waste. Yep. And explain not only to the leadership, but a lot of times in publicly traded companies, the board of directors, the risk that the company's facing and the things you can do about it. Never bring a problem without a solution. Bring the solution. Awesome. Well, CJ, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate your insights. No, thank you.